What number of podcasts is this? I don't know. It's late. Sorry, we're late. We've been busy. <laughs> yeah, work's busy. Kids are busy. Having a hard time uh, getting our schedules to, to line up so that we have free time. But we have been feeling appropriately guilty about not filming it, so. We do mention it a lot. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Here we are. <laughs> yes. So what do you want to talk about? Well, I have a few things that I want to talk about. Cool. The first that comes to mind is the uh, the general smugness that I pick up on on the internet referring to training and what people should be doing or shouldn't be doing and all this bullshit about why so many things are waste of time and it just pisses me off so that's fresh in my mind all right well, you, like what you get any of that well no because like i don't follow the same kind of people that you follow yeah. <laughs> right i follow slightly more like yeah yeah i mean part of that is definitely the, the circles that you float around in on the internet but i feel like there's definitely i mean there's just everybody's got their camps like obviously we're in this functional range conditioning joint specific training stuff because we've experienced you know great benefits from it as has our clients and business over the years like it's all been really good i just think it's funny how you know i mean it's it's hard not to base things off of your opinion but people do that so much and they'll just say well training your joint individually is a waste of time you can just do these exercises because it takes your shoulder into full shoulder flexion and full extension and and look what I can do with that, you know, or or like I'm really bendy. I can do the splits and all I do is fucking squat. It's like, well, you're one person. What does it take, though, to have a whole bunch of people be able to do that? And it's also not taking into account what their little fucking individual needs are. You know, like if you have a person that has a really mobile hip and lots of rotation and you just have them squat and do some splits training, they probably do really well. If you have somebody with a bum ass hip, like my right hip, try to do any of that, it fucking hurts and your back hurts all the time when you're squatting. So like, how do you reconcile that? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's part of the, the part of the big problem is that the consumer wants to be told what to do and they want it to be simple and they want it to work quickly. Um, they basically want to be sold a pipe dream, you know, and everybody kind of really wants to believe that there is something out there that is easy you know they don't mind necessarily working hard but it's just like get me out of here you know like i don't i don't want to i don't want to be confused i just want someone to tell me what's going to work um i want someone to fix my problems you know i want the solution to be simple i don't want it to to i don't want the answer to be it depends you know and that's the problem with training a human is that everybody's different you know like you, you the knees over toes guy is a hundred percent saving 30% of people's knees, you know, the other 70%, that's not what their problem is at all, you know, so he's making some people's knees way worse because, but he's crushing it because he is fixing 30% of those people's knees totally. <laughs> and that's what people want. They want that, like, look what I did. This solved all my problems. Cha-ching, you know, like people really light up on that. Um, and then there's just also a lot of bashing, you know, like there's a lot of uh, people that get really bent out of shape when somebody else is making a bunch of money slash popularity by telling people that they need to train mobility and they never do train mobility, you know, so they're like, well, it's bullshit or I can't find any research that says that stretching is going to prevent injury. So you shouldn't stretch to prevent injury, but it's like, well, use your fucking noodle, you know, like it. <laughs> If developing range of motion, of which stretching would be a component, uh, if you have more range of motion in a joint that might get taken into those deep ranges of motion, like if you're, you know, a football player or an athlete or somebody doing jujitsu or whatever it is, like if you don't have a lot of available access or range of motion in a joint, you only have so much play before you're screwed. So developing range of motion. Yeah. And so maybe those studies weren't able to take a long enough period of time or look at the right combination of factors, you know, like just, yep. Just showing that stretching the bicep or the quad, you know, like didn't prevent quad injuries, you know, kind of a thing. It's like, well, no shit. You know, that's a stupid fucking study. Well, yeah. I mean, and Studies prevent common sense a lot of the time. They prevent using common common sense and also experience. You know, like people that have been training people for fucking decades know what is working and isn't working. You know, and so oh, the study didn't show that, and then they start to change. And then somebody they're like, oh, now it does work. It's like, well, no shit. You know. 
Yeah, totally. And I mean, you can't ever prevent injury. You can definitely do things that make it harder to get injured and flexibility is part of that. You know, it's like we were talking about this the other day with like gymnasts and ballet dancers, like go look at some fucking Olympic gymnasts or some really high level ballet dancers. You're not going to find one of those motherfuckers that didn't spend a huge amount of time stretching right? because it's, it's a requirement for doing that stuff. And it works on levels that are way less high than being an elite gymnast or dancer. Like if you have a shoulder that, doesn't externally rotate for shit and you want to go do jujitsu and somebody puts you in an Americana and cranks your shoulder back there. If it's never been there before, or it has no ability to tolerate load there, you're going to get fucked up way more than you would if you just trained external rotation. Yeah. And I think there's the camp. that's also like, you don't need to train joint movement in isolation because you could just do some behind the neck press. And a lot of the time, those are the people that already have external rotation. They could do behind the neck press and it maintains some external rotation for them, which is, which makes sense. But if you have a fucking shoulder that stops here and you're just trying to press behind your neck, it's not going to work that well, nor is it going to target that one aspect of your shoulder that you really need more of. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it is that thing. Like it's not this or that it's probably a little bit of this and that. And there's also just more than one way to skin a cat. I mean, there, you know, there's so many different training methodologies out there that are effective. There are different exercises. There are different ways of combining different things. Like is the only way to develop range of motion stretching? No, you know, like, and yeah, there probably are some limitations to just stretching. Like we've been talking about a little bit. Um, uh, but is it a critical tool to be used in conjunction with that? Yeah. Like you don't want to try to develop range of motion without using stretching. Like that just seems to be, trying totally. too hard. Um, but yeah, the, 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 ten- the tendency to bash things that aren't understood fully yet. Like why, why do we have to do that? Why do we have to like attack everybody else? And I mean, that's just the funny thing. It's like, we want to, we always want to promise somebody that this one way is the way this one thing I'm trying to sell you is the thing. Like all these other things are shitty. Don't do them. You know, it's just funny. Yeah. And then, I mean, recently, like, we've just had this whole, uh, which there's also backlash against, I guess that's a good thing now, but just the the form, you know, like how all of these exercises that we do in strength and conditioning, or we used to do only in strength and conditioning, became like the end-all, be-all, like this is the only way to squat. Like, if you follow these exercise forms and then don't do any of these old, like, old-time strongman lifts, they're all, like, off the table because they're all going to fucking kill you you know like you're gonna ruin your body by doing these exercises and like i don't think these guys all have ruined bodies you know it's just that some schmucks came along and were like that's all bad for you you know but again we're starting to figure out like you just have to train appropriately for these things like if you just take some guy some random dude and throw him into a heavy jefferson curl might not be the best idea because he might have very limited spine flexion and it might do some bad things to his back but if you have a goal to do that that might be better for this person they might need that it might improve things like it's again back to that it depends slash nuance conversation yeah and you know i I think where most of that nuance gets criticized is that it's it's looked at as like a a deterrent for people starting out because they're like oh you're making it too fucking complicated like that's also lacking nuance you know it's at the, at the base level, you should lift some fucking weights, you should do some cardio, and you should stretch things that are tight and make sure that they have a little more capacity than just being able to be stretched. Those are sort of like the three categories that pretty much will solve it. And you can right. you can, you can can start and just, just start. Like, no matter what, you can go do something and figure it out as you go along. That's usually how you figure it out anyway. You're like, well, my shoulder hurts every time I bench press. Well, let's look at your shoulder. And I think that aspect is, is often overlooked. There's like the people who are movement optimists and just say, just fucking bend and twist and do all these things and your body will get better at it, which in certain aspects, it it does get better at those things if there's enough underlying capacity. But for those people who don't have the underlying capacity to try to do that, it's just like what you said about knees over toes. It's like, there's a bunch of people whose knees feel better. We've had a bunch of clients whose knees fucking hurt more when they do that program. So it just depends on the individual. So having something to look at and just to help you understand like who are these things going to be good for joint specific training 
using functional range conditioning principles does that because it just gives you something to look at. Like, what is a shoulder supposed to do? It should have all these ranges of motion. It should have rotation. You should be able to load those end ranges. And if none of those feel good or hurt or you're weak as fuck, then we know exactly what we need to work on some of the time. Well, I think that that's the big thing. And, you know, we, we like functional range systems because they have come up with an assessment, you know, and a diagnostic basically. And that's what is generally missing from everything. Everything else seems to be, well, we're going to come up with a series of exercises that worked on me and some of the people that I work with. And we're just going to do all these exercises because those exercises are going to give you a well-rounded enough movement pattern in some way or shape or form that's going to fix all your problems for you. But they seem to lack a diagnostic where it's just like, why, why, why can't we diagnose somebody and look at what's going on with them? And that's like, you know, functional range systems, I would, I would bet money. Like if you go ask the guys that invented it and said, you know, well, I'm doing it this way though. Like, but well, are you analyzing the body that you're doing it on? And are you training the specific things that need to be trained in a specific fashion that gets the results that you need. If the answer is yes, then fucking great. You know, like do whatever you got to do. But if you're not like figuring out what body you're trying to do the stuff on first, it's like a blind dart game. You know, like you have no idea if you're aiming towards a bullseye, you're throwing towards a wall and you might hit something, but it's better to know like what you need to fix. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other side of that too, is that there's lots of, assessments out there that people do you know like they'll have you squat and they look at your squat and they're like well i see a hip shift and you see these imbalances and they're like well so what though a squat doesn't doesn't tell you everything just like any movement does so there's lots of assessments that are bullshit and i do see a lot of backlash against assessments like if you're assessing somebody you're wasting their time just go have them work out if you just have somebody go fucking work out it's kind of doing the same thing you're still not looking at at least a few underlying qualities and so like I think the, the thing to me that I like the one of the things I like the most about this is that the assessment is looking at what a fucking joint is supposed to do like that that's the easiest way to see if somebody should be doing something or not you know like if you're put in again I'll use the Americana like if you're put in external rotation and that just hurts really badly in the back of your shoulder to go there that's about as simple as it gets you know you need something with your shoulder. You don't need to go press more. You don't need to do pull-ups. You need to figure out why your shoulder just hurts to go into rotation. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's the sort of the funny bit about assessments that look at like a functional movement screen where they look at like a squat, for example. Um, you can't tell how the body is compensating to get into that position. You know, like if you could see, maybe if you could see some sort of like a lit up picture of like where strain and stress and and you know whatever was happening color wise or whatever you might go oh okay there's way too much pressure in this guy's low back when they're at parallel like that doesn't need to be we don't need to load that like how can we change this position so that it fixes these things um but yeah like if you just took that took that squat and you gave it to a hundred different people and all of those hundred people could do that squat and then you all had them squat you know the same program you know, if you could theoretically control all of the other variables like stress, diet, sleep, blah, 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 you still would have a totally different result at the end of a 12 week cycle just because of some of those people would have gone into it with tons of hip capsule space, tons of joint, you know, good knees, good whatevers. And then you probably had a huge percentage of those people that had barely enough anything to do it and so those people with barely enough anything to do it by the end of that cycle they're going to be in what much worse shape than the other people that had all this space going into it so you need an assessment prior to that can you all do a squat that says well but like how is this squat going to treat these people like you should be able to predict that based on your assessment that you do before the squat if that makes sense right yeah, yeah totally yeah, I mean, I, I think, like, going back to that, like, a generalized program thing, it's it's tough because somebody who does a generalized program, they sign up for a membership and they're like, did it, and I got better. That sounds really good. It's a good sales point, but what really matters is how many people can do the same thing, right? And when I look at, like, 
how we used to do stuff, how we had people just squat and press and deadlift and pull up and all that shit. And some people got much better. Some people didn't. They had, they ended up having more problems and we would try to make adjustments based on that, but not really resolving it for those people so they could just get back and do as many pull-ups as they want or do as much jujitsu as they want and not have their neck hurt. The cool part about this stuff is that if you give somebody a better working joint and connective tissue surrounding that joint, you can really have them do lots of stuff to get stronger, faster, or whatever. Like, and I don't see anything else out there that's that's taking that approach of like really giving somebody focusing on on specific anatomy and really making that robust and all of the directions of movement and speeds of loading. And then just being like, well, just do whatever the fuck you want. You want to lift weights? Do you want to go dance? You know, like that's that's probably the best way to make a generalized program work for more people or really work across the board, right? Like if you're really putting time and training those fundamental qualities that you need to be a human, any program's going to work better after if you're, whatever exercises you're doing, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. I was just going to say, going back to um, the traditional mindset of training, like starting jujitsu made me realize how woefully unprepared my hands and elbows were for doing that kind of stuff. And, you know, think about all the training that I've done prior to doing jujitsu, like lifting weights, doing old time strongman, gymnastic stuff, all kinds of different grip related things in the gym setting. And then still feeling like my fingers hurt all the time and my elbows hurt. And it, you know, like prior to doing the kind of training that we do, it would have been like, I don't know, try to do like, do more grip exercise, hang your gi on a pull-up bar and do gi pull-ups. It's like, it takes more than just squeezing more shit, you know? Like, I needed to really train my fingers to bend more and be really strong in this fabric pinching position and really do that with my elbows cranked into the weirdest angles of rotation and taking the this approach of like looking at these parts and how they move and realizing like, it fucking hurts in my elbow when I do it like this. It hurts in my outside of my knuckles when I bend my fingers really flat like that you know like that's not an exercise that I need to go do it's like I need to load that tissue and make it adapt and that's really what's happening when you're doing exercises you're doing a squat you're training the tissue that your body uses in a squat you're just not training all the other stuff that's outside that and that leaves big holes in how you move and what you're able to do and I think it's you have a hard time seeing those holes until you actually do try to do an actual sport you know like especially a sport that requires a lot of those totally. dusty corners, as I say, like I've been dancing again. Um, and it's like, yeah, I just missing so many bits. Like I felt like I was doing a more thorough, um, training things really thoroughly, but it's like, I guess I didn't do this. I didn't do like a very externally rotated hamstring training. It's always pretty neutral. You know, like I don't, I don't get into that maximal external rotation and train my hamstrings. But in dancing, it's like, oh, well, that's what you're doing all the time. So it's like, yeah. damn it. Well, t I mean, you know, like, if you're unfamiliar with this kind of training, you might be thinking right now, like, well, how the fuck do I do all this? Like, how do I hit all of these parts? And the cool thing about your body is that when you, you give it a little bit of information via loading, it, it adapts to that. So you can, you can do this stuff efficiently. Like, if you have a hip that's, that doesn't do some important hip things, you can train that a couple times a week for 10 minutes as you're doing your other training as part of your regular training. And it gets better. Like anybody who's worked out knows if they do pushups with some regularity, they get better at pushups. Your body doesn't know the difference between a pushup and training your hip internal rotation with the exception of different lines of tissue are being loaded. But if you give it load, it adapts. And so it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It shouldn't be. It should just you know, it's more just have an open mind about looking at things that suck at moving and train them. Yeah, specific training. Yeah, like, uh, you know, I've heard some people say, like, you don't need to train shoulder rotation <clears throat> to train your rotator cuff because your rotator cuff is getting targeted in something like a lateral raise. And it's like, well, it is. That's my I got to go timer. Um, but but training specific rotation, like you're not going to get stronger at pulling somebody this way or resisting this or, 
unless you just whatever, train whatever, unless you're training that. So why avoid training it? You're like, oh, no, I'm, I'm good. I got it doing this. Like, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you look at people who have pain or limitations in their shoulder, like it hurts when they move a certain direction or they just don't have enough strength there, that's always the classic argument. Just do more of those exercises with lighter weight and wait for it to to get better when you could do it more directly and just say, well, which angle hurts? Where does it hurt? All of that can guide you to exactly what needs to be loaded because that's really what it is. There's tissue in there that needs to be loaded and your shoulder or any part of your body isn't a couple little parts of the rotator cuff. It's like thousands of lines of tissue that are differently loaded at every individual joint angle, which is why it's usually really specific. Like people are like, my arm's fine, my arm's fine. Oh fuck, it hurts here. It's like, okay, let's look at it. That can be, that can be trained directly and you don't need more lateral raises to do that. Lateral raises could be part of your training at some point when it doesn't hurt to lift your arm up here. Those are great. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Do something. Yeah, and we won't know because we have to go, but yeah. <laughs> it'll take us a while to figure that out anyway. But um, thanks for putting up with our break. Sorry we took so long to get another one of these up here, but we're, we're still doing them. Here yeah. it is. And thanks so. for listening to us complain about things on the internet. Yep. All right. That's what happens Peace. when you live in your house and you work out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>